So look, I'll share with you why I'm sharing this information with you later in this video, including why you've got a bit of an echo today. But for now, let's open up my Zero accounting software instance and I'm going to change the date range to the Australian financial year. As you can see, this channel earned 51,000 Australian dollars last financial year. Keep in mind that's revenue, not profit. After cost of goods sold and operating expenses, we have about 14,000 Australian dollars net profit. Now for context, last year, the total views for this channel was closer to 10 million views. Now keep in mind, I don't do cycling YouTube full time. I do it, I say about half time, so anywhere between 20 to 30 hours per week, and that does not include writing time. Time, that's shooting, editing, scripting, and general admin. Now, the financial year before the most recent one I just shared with you, in revenue, I did 68,000 Australian dollars and 32,000 net profit. And the financial year before that, 64,000 Australian dollars in revenue and 14,500 net profit. Note there was a big equipment expense that year, upgrading cameras, computers, hard drives, etc. So you might be asking, why did I earn less in the most recent financial year versus the previous two? especially when the views were at their biggest by at least 2 million, simply because I only ran two sponsored ad integrations. You know where this video is brought to you by Squarespace, Masterworks, Ketone IQ, and you deliver a 60 second ad integration last financial year. Whereas the previous financial years before that, I ran a lot more. Now I don't have my first two years to share with you here because it's not in my accounting software. It was kind of all over the place when I was first getting the channel off the ground, but things were in terms of revenue and profit a lot lower in those initial years. Now, depending on the year, I'd say roughly 70 to 80% of that revenue is Google ads. That's the little ads that run before each video starts and sometimes during and the additional revenue comes from either the sponsored 60 second ad integrations or also being a cycling youtuber sometimes I get given equipment for reviews and then I can sell that equipment secondhand once I'm finished with it so why am I telling you this well, there's two reasons and reason one you bloody love yourself reason two you're a dickhead but I need to preface these two reasons by saying just how grateful I am for your support because without it, I couldn't do this and that would be really disappointing. And additionally, I'm very grateful for that money I can earn through the channel. I only have to go back 2017 and 2018, which doesn't feel like a long time ago for me, where I basically didn't earn any money for two years, putting myself into further financial debt and failing miserably in an attempt to get a bike marketplace off the ground. That was a challenging time for me, putting myself under financial stress while experiencing a ton of self-doubt. So I don't use that term grateful lightly. Back to the point, the two reasons. Number one, I feel that how you make money on YouTube or how much you can earn from YouTube is the number one question people seem to dance around when they ask me what I do for a living. So I feel there's genuine interest and to validate that, I recently put a couple of polls up on my Instagram and on my YouTube. And as you can see, even AG2R Pro, Mickey Shah wanted to know. Perhaps he's looking to get into YouTube in retirement. Mickey, if you're watching, you can let us know below. And number two, in my own little bizarro YouTube world, reading comments and general sentiment, there appears to be misconceptions at times about what's really driving the content. My gut feel is people see a certain amount of subscribers and a certain amount of views, and they feel that if I put a Powerade on the bench or mention a product, that there's an ulterior motive. However, I've certainly been very open, honest, and transparent about when I've been given a product or when I'm being paid for a video, because I can appreciate as a viewer, it's very important for you to know. So I can only assume that the higher levels of scrutiny that this channel has received in recent times purely comes down to the fact that there's just no educational content out there about how much us cycling YouTubers are making and if it's passion or money that's driving the 20, 30, 40 hours of work that goes into a video. Now, please don't get me wrong. While YouTube has certainly taught me that making money isn't a number one driver, it's certainly nice to have more of it because by having more, we can make further investments into what we're doing, which takes me to part two of this video, which is, as you can see, I have my first ever, after doing YouTube for five years, office space. For me, this is easily the most exciting step forward for this channel ever. 
as it's going to enable a lot more possibilities. It's also the biggest investment I have ever made into the channel at roughly 2000 Australian dollars every single month, which is a cost I'll be splitting down the middle with another company called the Road Cycling Academy, which is a business that's been able to be formed through this channel and a business that has made me recognize that the demoralizing failure at Bike Chaser over a two year period actually had a massive silver lining. Finding my passion for video and of course, massive business learnings. And while I'm yet to draw a salary myself through that business, it's got staff, it's growing, and it's got such an awesome crew over there now, it's borderline becoming self-sufficient. So you might be rightfully asking, given the subject matter of this video, what's enabled this office space? So over the past, I'd say three, maybe four years, I've had the opportunity to trial and test a number of different products. Some that I haven't shared on the channel and some that I have. And through doing so, I've been able to narrow in on certain products and build relationships with brands. And for the first time ever in the last few months, this channel has been able to sign long-term partnership agreements with three companies. So channel supporters will know that BMC Bikes recently came on board as a channel partner. And while they don't pay the channel any direct income, they do provide a bike every year. And if I choose, or if the channel chooses, the bike can be sold at the end of each year and that provides an additional revenue source for the channel. Additionally, Asioma, Power Pedals, a company I've been working with since 2021, they'll be paying me in money based on an agreed number of integrations, which works in perfectly with my bike testing and bike reviews that I do on Asioma Power Pedals as well as a company called HVMN, who provide a product called Ketone IQ. This is a ketone supplement I actually did some work with way back in 2019, and of course, for a training series I did this year. So you might be now rightfully asking again, well, what does this mean for the channel in terms of revenue for this financial year? Now, clearly I'd be speculating, and I don't know how many views the channel is gonna do, and also HVMN and Asioma require a certain amount of integrations which may or may not be achieved. But if all goes well, this channel could hit, or I'd say get close to that six figure AUD revenue with probably I'd say half or a bit more of that being operating expenses. As you can probably now see, the last few months has been pretty big for the channel. It's a massive milestone after doing this for five years now and what it enables for the future of this channel is what I am most excited about because really the next phase for this channel is to hire some help. To wrap up, I've said it before and I'll say it again, none of this would be possible without your support and I am forever grateful for that.